The Times of London the other day reported on this flat earth society that's now booming, uh, at least booming to the extent that flat earth societies can for the time being. But I mean, they had, I, I don't know, they had a conference the other day in London and they got like 300 flat earthers. Where I'm from, liberal means something different from what it means here, for instance. Uh, and there's all sorts of words like that that don't travel. But no, I mean, I think that generally uh, the, uh, the problem of labels has been accentuated by social media, which has all sorts of advantages, has some serious drawbacks. And the main drawback, I mentioned this to Matt earlier, is that people who do the sort of things we do used to craft what we said and what we wrote in order to make sure, among other things, that a, an honest critic couldn't misunderstand us. And the strange thing about the era of social media and the internet is that you end up having to, gra uh, to craft what you say and write in order to try to make sure that a dishonest critic also can't misrepresent you. It's an almost impossible task, um, but one we're obviously trying to find our way through. It's, when, you, when it comes to the sorting out which are the honest critics and which are the dishonest critics, <laughs> I find that's actually getting more difficult as well because uh, while I pretend to read minds on stage, I can't actually read minds. And so if somebody um, comes after something I've said on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I have to spend a great deal of time before I even decide if I'm going to respond or how I'm going to respond. Is this individual confused? Have I not crafted my message clearly enough? Mm -hmm. um, or is there some way I could reword the message to rehabilitate this individual, or are they one of the dishonest ones, the people who are they sometimes labeled the outrage brigade by right. my friend Seth? Uh, they're just never going to be happy no matter what you say, because you didn't say it exactly the way they wanted to yeah. in the time frame they wanted. Yeah, what I get is you, 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 didn't, you didn't say it all in the 60 seconds we gave you, <laughs> which if you're dealing with the meaning of life or something, it's often hard to hit that, that moment. Yes. It's in the, in the debates that I've often had with um, religious apologists, there's something called the Gish Gallop, which is named after Dwayne Gish, where the apologist will present 20 things that are wrong, right. each of which would take you an hour yes. to 10 hours to properly rebut. Yes. And then whichever ones you don't address, when it's their turn to speak next, they'll say, my opponent failed to address <laughs> points three, four, seven, and therefore I win. Yeah. Well, we, the, uh, the Times of London the other day reported on this flat earth society that's now booming, uh, at least booming to the extent that flat earth societies can for the time being. But I mean, they had, I, I don't know, they, they had a conference the other day in London and they got like 300 flat earthers who all had these points about like the, the horizon, no one had actually been to it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? And, I, and there was some amazing, amazing. Then they had T-shirts and things. You know, they obviously want people to know they're flat earthers and how dim they are. And <laughs> but the, you know, we weren't expecting that. We weren't expecting the flat earth society to get a boom in the foreseeable future, and yet there they are.